So welcome back to my channel, this is Dom and another update from the painting table. So I feel like I haven't done quite so much this, this last week or so, um, mainly because I've been doing a lot of cavalry and cavalry slows you down, um, well, slows me down. Don't dislike them quite as much as I used to, but uh, that's down to the holy grail that is contrast paints. <laughs> I know, people hate contrast paints, people love contrast paints, I'm not going to go on about them, but I just find that for horses, they are a godsend. Anyway, let's have a look at some of the figures. So first up, um, from the mountain in the garage, I took out this box of English Civil War Carassia models from uh, Warlords, um, and painted them up as basically as the, um, the Royal Lifeguards, I mean... <laughs> They're, they're in plate armour, so you're not really going to tell an awful lot of what they're um, supposed to represent. Um, and um, I'm quite pleased with how they came out. But they're horrible models. I did not like doing them. Um, I, why do Warlords do this? I don't get it. The, the, the horses are plastic, and they're bitches to get together. You, you know, they've got these... Um, I don't know what we called them on a horse, uh, but the strap that runs down to their tail from the back of the saddle, which they use to hide the mould line, which is good. But then you've still got one on the ho on the horse's head, on his neck. Um, I don't like them at all. Don't like these plastic moulds. Um, they they're really not my thing. But then the figures themselves are metal. But you know what I love about what I hate about metal <laughs> drives me insane. <laughs> Soft metal. They're soft freaking metal. Unbelievably soft. I mean, just ridiculous. This guy with the standard, just noticed the lower half of the standard's bent again. I, the, 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 um, the pole, flagpole, <laughs> whatever you call it, um, was so soft that literally you touched it with your little finger and it curled. Um, so I've had to replace it with a pin. Um, with a, um, I don't know where it came from, one of the, one of, I think it was a, sh a shortened p a s pike shaft, so I've used that. Um, and I'm not very happy with it, plus he's holding it in such a weird way, he's got his arm up. I um, mean, how you would hold a flag like that, I have no idea. And it isn't like, you know, the flag is supposed to carry, so you see on some of the uh, Napoleonic cavalry, um, the, the stand continues down, or the pole continues down and sits in a sort of holster, by the stirrup this one doesn't it, it actually is designed to it's a short flag I think they used to swirl them if I as I understand it and I despite what Gary said in one of his recent videos I'm not an expert on ECW um, but as I understand it they used to twirl flags so they were very short they had quite a grip down the bottom area and, and they could swing them around but would a guy on a horse do that and also I don't know maybe maybe I'm wrong but just just that was horrible so not happy with that um, the other thing I cocked up which is my fault um, not the kit's fault was the guy here in the middle I assumed he was the officer because he's you know got a soft hat and what have you I thought he must be the officer he's not he's the trumpeteer I didn't realise that until I'd stuck all the arms on, painted half the figures, including the guy with the trumpet on this guy here, to realise that this guy, with the, he's actually the trumpeteer, and he should have this arm here. Uh, if you can see, this one hasn't, well, you probably can't see because I've tried to shield it, but he shouldn't have, he should, oh, the, the arm holding the trumpet, the bugle, um, hasn't got any armour on it. Um, and the sword has got armour on it, so, ah, <laughs> uh, never mind, it won't, I won't, I won't know, or well, nobody else will know from, from five feet away, apart from now I've just told everybody, but anyway, uh, but I, I'm quite happy otherwise with the effects of the regiment, I think it'll look nice on the table, Karashia's a, a fairly effective units, um, they're obviously heavily armoured, so you get good saving throws, um, but um, and certainly the early armies have a few of these regiments with them scattered in them, particularly the Royalist Army. Um, so, Alec, watch out, they're coming your way, baby. So next up is another general uh, for my English Civil War force. Now, again, I don't know what figure this is. I suspect he's a renegade one. Um, he came out of the back pile of uh, stuff. Um, he's got very, very ornate armour on. 
um, and I've accentuated that by using gold edging to it. So I've done it the way I usually do it now with armor. Funny, it's my new go-to way of doing armor. I use uh, this one, basilic, basilicum gray contrast paint as a base over the top of my primer. And then depending on what I want to do, if I'm doing normal armor, I'll effectively dry brush silver over the top. Um, but in this case, I dry brush gold over the top. And I think the effect is, and then a wash over the top of that. And I think the effect is pretty darn good. So another general ticked off, ready to join the Royalist forces. So next up, the medieval theme continues with uh, eight more um, well sergeants. These were described as so. These are North Star miniatures. Um, they um, they just called them yeah medieval sergeants. Um, and I so I have painted these up to look like uh, in my mind at least um, uh, military order hospitler. Um, lay brethren so for every night there were a multitude of sergeants and brethren who were not sort of ordained if that's the right word into the military orders um, but had other functions were still generally much more proficient than the average knight or the average um, sergeant or men at arms or what have you of the era um, but weren't didn't have quite the same uh, religious constraints on them now I've taken an artistic license here um, in reality, um, most of the hospitallers through the early period, whether they were lay brothers or full, you know, uh, hospitallers, um, wore this um, black uniform, black outfits. Um, it was only later that they that they changed to the red one, and initially there was about a ten year period. I've been doing me research, found sound like a right nose. Um, there was about a 10 year period where one of the popes, I forget which one it was, um, basically said that the, the, the full hospitaller knights should be wearing red and the lay brothers and the you know, support staff basically should be wearing black. Um, understandably, it caused a little bit of resentment, I think. Um, and after about 10 years, it was dropped and everyone went back wearing the same outfit. So later on, the lay knights wore red in the same way as the hospitallers, and early on, everyone wore black. But kind of, I just like the artistic license of having my uh, regular uh, hospitaller knights in red, and my uh, lay support knights, support sergeants, in black. I think it just, just works for me. Also means I could use these as earlier hospitallers. Um, and nobody can complain because they're black. Um, so I'm, I'm quite pleased with how they've come out there. I didn't like the horses much. Some of them, uh, this guy here, the horse is kind of very long and thin. Um, but actually, they paint up pretty nicely. Uh, I think the effect as a unit is pretty good. Um, there's a bit of variety in the unit. Um, mixture of you know spears, swords and axes, um, which I like. I like this dude here. Um, I like the fact he's. You can see that. Focus in. Uh, he's got this helmet on the back of his uh, sat light, well, saddle cloth, I guess that is, um, and uh, is wearing a soft cap. And you notice I've I've tried to put the little white crosses on them. Um, I put them on the the surcoats and also on the shields uh, with varying degrees of success. These are. Um, so I didn't use my own um, transfers, mainly because I just wasn't sure I was going to be able to get them down small enough. And I had some of these um, uh, Battle Fag uh, Fire, Fire Forge Games um, Hospitaller Knight uh, transfers. So I took some of the little tiny ones off and used those. Um, but it was an absolute bugger. <laughs> Oh my goodness, how much, how difficult it was. I must have, for every one I managed to get successfully onto their chest, there was probably another one that I failed with and it rolled over and I couldn't unwrap it. And oh, so, more successful on the shields, I just went with the plain black shields and just put a little uh, cross in the top corner. I could have freehanded that, but uh, I thought I got this, I had the transfers, so I thought I might as well use them. Um, and I think, you know, it works, it works. I'm quite happy with how they've come out. 
So that's an overload for the uh, retinue. Done. So next up, um, here's the completed unit of 12 uh, Gripping Beast 28mm um, late Roman cataphracts. You may have seen um, I did an unboxing video um, because they Gripping Beast sent me these figures uh, to review. Um, and I don't know whether it was a bit harsh or not with them. I mean, so um, if you've seen the video, I think um, they're not my favourite figures I've ever had. Um, but I think as a unit like this, they come out really well. And they are extremely good value for plastic figures. Um, you know, normal cavalry, when you buy a cavalry figure, and it's metal or, yeah, metal figure, it tends to be about £4 a figure four to five pounds a figure these work out less than two pound a figure um so um i think actually in terms of value very good i think as a unit they work pretty well still not entirely sure i mentioned the horses i thought were a little bit thin some people commented that um they didn't think they were too bad um my only thought is that you know <laughs> bear in mind these horses are carrying blokes wearing full plate armor and or scale armor at, at, at worst and also they're, they're fully barded they would have been big old horses and these seem just a bit too normal um but you know it is what it is uh, but i think the the animation is pretty reasonable um fitting them together the plastic molds um not perfect fits but near enough um and also the arms took a little bit of getting position just right I think I've just noticed one that I've managed to miss filling which is really annoying but um, I think the overall effect as I say as a unit is pretty good um, I've used a mixed bag of brass um, steel and bronze for the bolt for the barding uh, just to break it up again dry brushed it with silver and um, uh, and heavy dark strong wash in fact i know i used um nullin non oil non oil that's it on it um and then dry brushed it with the uh, iraqi sand just to take the the sheen off it after it'd been varnished and um you know so i think the unit's pretty but pretty good works out reasonably well um don't think i hold on to these figures they'll probably go on ebay um but you know they're nice and um, the, uh, somebody will find them really useful uh, if they're looking to do that late Roman army uh, as a sword point or any other system that needs a massed unit of cavalry. I think they're, um, they're pretty useful for that. So there you go. That's them done. So finally, uh, these are the, I think they were called the Adventurers um, in that Kickstarter I had from um, the Hollow God um and i showed on the channel and um i just thought i'd paint them up see how they came out they're resin figures um they're actually really nice um i love this guy this barbarian see the detail on him really really impressive um and i think the paint job's done okay with him i think he's he's pretty good now um i i don't quite know what i was thinking when i ordered um, and the problem I mentioned when I did this video or talked about the, this Kickstarter, oops, sorry, not quite centered. There we go. The problem I have with uh, Kickstarters is um, you order them so far ahead to when you actually get the figures, and sometimes you forget what it is you were planning to do with them. Um, so for some reason, I got two of these cleric -y types and two of these, um, I think they called them en enchantresses or inquisitors or someone like that they, i think she called they called them and i and i for the life of me i don't know why i picked two of each i think i picked the clerics because i thought they might actually fit within my medieval warband and if i could do something with that shield they probably could but i'm not sure they can be bothered um if i'm honest um so but what i was thinking with her not really sure so she's got a twin sister. <laughs> um, so I don't, I, I don't know what I'm playing at, but anyway, whatever. Obviously I had some master plan. Um, this guy, I think I'm going to hold on to him um, because I really like the model. And 
he could join my saga uh, Age of Magic Horde army or he may join a future fantasy project given that Ken's forcing me into doing orcs um, so I think I might hold on to him uh, likewise this uh, enchanter enchanter I think he'll I'll hold on to him because he could well be useful and I really like him he's in I think um, <laughs> This is supposed to be flames. I'm going to have to do a little bit more work on this, but it actually looks like he's holding up a pile of sausages, which is a bit unfortunate. Um, and I, I've tried to sort of use different tonal colours on there, but it hasn't really worked. So um, I, I need to do a little bit more because <laughs> it just doesn't look right so far. Um, but anyway, I like the figure. Uh, he's got uh, his spell book there. Um, some kind of... Um, I don't know what these are, but containers where there's presumably relics or some sort of um, materials used for, for casting spells. And I think he's nice. So I'll hold on to those two for sure. Um, I might hold on to one of these. I don't know. I might just sell the, the others on eBay um, just to, because I, I really don't know that I'm ever going to need her, for instance. Um, nice though she is as a model. Um, I'm just not sure I'm going to need her. But anyway, so the clerics have come out well as well. Uh, I think they're, they're really nice models. Oops. Really nice models. Um, really like the style of them. Love the animation on this guy. I think he's come out pretty well. And there's his twin. So, yeah. And a bit of variety from doing lots of horses because that seemed to be all I was doing this last week. So, um, yeah, reasonably productive. Uh, nice to get some of the pile done. And, um, yeah, very happy with the progress so far. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed the look at what I've been working on. Um, hope your projects are going well appreciate all the videos that are going up I did get a bit behind on some of them but I think I'm just about caught up there did seem to be a huge wave of videos um, that I'm <laughs> sort of dropped out of a few um, but I think I've caught up as I say so um, that's all good and um, yeah I'm looking forward to seeing what you're all working on I've got a couple of projects on the go now um, Thanks to Ken, I've suddenly got all these orcs to paint up, and I'm also trying to get ahead of the Infamy Infamy rule set, which is sounds like, from what um, uh, Rich at Lard Island says, uh, it's imminent. Uh, I think he was saying on a video, I was re oh, on a post I was seeing on the Facebook page that he was in the middle of uh, or in proofreading phase of the uh, rules. So two or three weeks time, we may have infamy infamy and i would like to at least get a start on um my uh germanic warriors that i want to do for the first set um even though you know still no sign of actually getting your physical gaming in but you know never mind at least i'll be ready for when it happens but i hope you're all doing well hope you're staying safe um the world seems to have gone completely to shit, shit at the moment i hope everyone's managing to keep um well and um keep safe more above everything else and um staying reasonably cheerful despite everything this is dom signing out